Hello everyone. I am Capitan Project Helisexuality, and this is the second video of a three-part guide to using the Kasatka submarine. Previously, we looked at the different threats to the submarine, weaknesses, generally how best to keep safe. This time, we will look at the different weapons of the submarine, how best to use them, what they work best against, and so on. All three weapons can be accessed at the main floor of the submarine, in this upcoming room. The weapons include torpedoes, accessed at the helm by whoever is piloting the submarine. Homing missiles, accessed either by the periscope operator, or the pilot by pressing right on the D-pad. And finally guided missiles, operated at this guided missile station. These are the most powerful weapon, so we'll start by looking at them. Pressing Y, or triangle on PlayStation, will do exactly what you'd imagine it would. It exits the missile. Exiting the missile also detonates it. You can use this to catch small, airborne targets, such as broomstick boys, without needing a direct hit. You steer the heroic missile using either the left stick, or the right stick. The missile can't be slowed down, and has no time limit on how long you can use it. It won't stop until it detonates, you exit, or you go outside of its range. As you can see, the range is quite generous. The in-game description for the Kasatka claims it to be 4000 meters. I can believe that. There are various obstacles in the way of hitting your target. The weather can impair your vision, as seen here. Lag can make some players extremely difficult to hit. They'll simply teleport all over the place, not actually be where they appear, etc. The game performing poorly in general can make things difficult, especially if you're on an old console like myself, or a PC with lower end hardware. Sudden pauses, drops in frame rate, buildings not loading in, not to mention enemy players not being visible until you're too close. Thermal thuckery can be used to alleviate the poor draw distance, and make things easier in extreme weather. Pay close attention to this comparison.
The distance at which you can see other players is much, much longer with thermal vision. It makes you wonder why the draw distance is so bad without it. It also cuts through fog and snow well, though you might find it's harder to see buildings, trees and lamp posts. Another downside is that you'll look very goofy while wearing it. Typically I just rely a lot on the mini-map, which you expand by pressing down twice quickly on the D-pad. Players might not be visible from afar, but many other structures are. I find structures or patterns on the map that the enemy is close to, then close in on him relative to that. I can see he's in the upper right corner of a few paths that form a triangle shape. I'll look for a triangle. I can see a triangle shaped area of grass. I'm going to head to the upper right corner of that. The expanded mini-map has a habit of shrinking back down at the worst moments. Here's how to stop that from happening. Earlier, I mentioned how lag can make things difficult. I wasn't exaggerating. A direct hit like that on your screen, it may be a different story on another player's screen. I wish I had something to fix this for you, but I don't know how to. I thought it was worth putting in so you're wary of this anyway. To make matters worse, the missiles don't always detonate on impact properly. Sometimes they bounce off objects. Nevertheless, these missiles are a very powerful weapon. They also have a wide turning radius, but you'll grow used to that. Give yourself more room to turn etc. The homing missiles haven't been the star of the video for a reason. They're not as good as I initially thought. While they're very accurate, they're not very fast. My buzzard, for example, might not be able to dodge them, but it can outrun them quite easily.
Along with good tracking, the missiles also have a decent lock-on range, longer than that of a broomstick. As you can see however, that doesn't mean much when the missile speed is this low. As you can see, even a stinky Mark II broomstick can outrun the missiles. However, the broomstick can't do that much else at this point. He's sort of trapped flying in a circle. It's much more effective to simply dive down underwater when a Mark II approaches, in my experience. So, these missiles don't have much use beyond blowing up slow targets that don't really need blowing up. Finally, we reach the pilot operated torpedoes. I have found these to be so and so. They are more of a self defense weapon against other submarines than anything else. You are extremely unlikely to beat a Doriador or Stromberg with these. Even against enemy submarines, as mentioned in the previous video, these kind of battles tend to be a simple drain of each other's health, with whoever started with the most winning by default. I see the Kasatka's torpedoes as more of a last resort. There are ways to win a far more decisive victory against other submarines, such as sending a guided missile, or even a Toreador slash Stromberg from inside your moon pool. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, remember, there is a previous part to this guide, as well as the third video coming up. The next part will look at how everything works together, general strategy and techniques, etc.